Welcome to The Leather Journey, and tonight we're going to start a new playlist and that's going to slowly evolve around collars and collars in the lifestyle and different ways that we in leather can use a uh, collar and what a collar may symbolize. Uh, often collars are just a fashion statement. I know in the last maybe decade or two, there's been some fashion trends, whether it be goth or steampunk or just uh, just people wearing them like a like a choker or an accessory and uh, so tonight I have a, a, a spectrum of collars to show you this is certainly not all the possible designs that are uh, possible with with collars I don't have a for example I don't have a posture collar to show you but you can google posture collar and see what one looks like but our good friend Buck at Waterhole Leather has loaned me some collars that he makes to be able to show you tonight in tonight's uh, demo. And then I have Moodstone's collars to show you as well. But without further ado, let's get started on collars. Um, two basic types of collars uh, are what I would call a play collar uh, to me, a play collar is going to have D-rings or attachment points at various parts around the collar. You know, it might or might not have other adornments like spikes or whatnot. But the basic function, the functional aspect of a collar is that it's a type, can be a type of bondage device that, partial bondage device that goes around the neck and you can attach clips and leads and rope and whatnot to it uh, during during play. Uh, a collar that only has uh, a D-ring in front, I would consider this certainly as a lifestyle looking collar, but it only has a D-ring in front, so it's not so functional for play other than maybe attaching a lead to it or a leash and leading someone around. But that simple little D-ring in the front of a black collar that has a few embellishments on it symbolizes uh, that, it, that there's, there's something, someone, especially when I turn it around and you see that it, that it has a post closure with a padlock through it, Someone owns the key to that padlock, and who might who might that someone be? That's an interesting question. So um, this collar, you know, when it's on someone, is going to look more a little more like a choker. It's going to fit up around the neck. So someone's going to ask, well, how tight or loose should a collar fit? As my rule of thumb. Uh, or rule of finger, if you will. When when the collar's in place, you should be able to put at least one finger between the collar and the neck, and no more than two. And some people, and, and some of that's personal preference. Some people prefer it to be loose enough that they can slip two fingers. Some people prefer the the closer fit of just one finger. But that's where the collar that's designed to go around the neck. This collar is kind of uh, more of a, an oval shape, so it's designed to hang down around the top of the collarbone, and it, on, you know, it has a, a ring for attachment. Uh, this, again, is a similar oval shaped collar. It's just made out of a simple piece of leather that's bratted with a loop on either side and then it's held together with uh, with a heart shaped padlock. Could be any padlock but it this particular type collar does require some kind of clasp closure to keep it together. So that these are Moodstone's collars here. This was her ownership collar. Uh, the black collar with a simple D-ring and the padlock, which I have the key to. Uh, this collar she picked up because 
She Sometimes she wants to be a little more comfortable, like if we're in an event and she's going to workshops all day long, she doesn't necessarily want this constraint constrained around her neck. So she'll wear this collar because it, it it's less constricting around the neck. And then she was at an event that actually bucket water hole leather was vending and she took her fancy to this one which is kind of more of a fashion collar it's it's pink and shiny and it's got some silver leather on it and again this fits around and uh, doesn't constrain her neck so she really likes this uh, when she's in a more relaxed place setting and it has a post and a lock so um, let's look at the ones buckle on this. The play ones, and we'll do a, a separate video on this. We have one that's blue. It's black leather, but it has a blue leather, uh, a strip of leather in the center of it that, that holds the 3D rings. And the back is finished with what I, what's called a lock, locking roller buckle. So a padlock can be put through that buckle. In fact, all of these are finished the same way with locking roller buckles and adjustments. So you have a blue one, a red one, and a black one. Well now, why would you need blue, red, and black other than for a fashion statement? Well, at least in the tradition that I've been taught and that I follow, uh, blue, red, and black collars have a specific meaning in certain uh, parts of the leather lifestyle community. And I'll do a whole separate video on what those collars mean and what they represent. Uh, Buck also loaned me what I'm gonna call a fashion collar. Uh, it's pink, he had these in different colors. I think it's actually fluorescent. And if I can do it, it has a switch and a battery and it flashes. So if you were going to like a rave or some sort of black light party or a dungeon and you know there's a lot of black light in it, that, that's definitely gonna be a fashion statement. This one doesn't have a locker, locking roller buckle. It's just a regular buckle so it couldn't be locked. And I'm trying to turn it off so I don't wear the battery out. That's just a little uh, flat pancake battery that can be replaced. So that's kind of nice if you're into something flashy. Now this this particular uh, collar that, that Waterhole Leathers made has a heart shape, which is kind of sentimental. Uh, and it's made out of suede. There's a little strip of black leather in the center of it but it's purple suede. He had these in a variety of different suedes. Suede, there's pluses and minuses to a suede collar. One is it's gonna be less expensive than top grain. Personally, I think it's not as comfortable as a top grain collar, but the plus of it is it's a lot less expensive, or it's a lot less inexpensive excuse me let me use the right word it's less expensive than a top grain collar and he's got this finished with uh, with big snaps and they're they're adjustable and he's got an adjustable length that can be put on or taken off to make it smaller or wider and of course I guess if you were going to order one from him directly you could give him a measurement and he could custom make one. Uh, and then this one, I think I've already showed off. It's the same design as Moodstone, what I'm gonna call her fashion collar, only it's done in top grain leather. This particular one is blue and black, but I think he has though this one in, in red and black as well and in all black but hers is pink and silver. Okay, so that's kind of it for the first round of, of what we're gonna do with collars. I'll do another short video on closures and the way that they're closed. 
but we'll make that a separate video in the playlist. As always, thanks for watching The Leather Journey.